Well, good morning, folks. Welcome to Coffee with Job on Monday. This is our first one of the new year. It is January the 3rd. And we are still in Job chapter 31, and we're reading from verse 29. If I had rejoiced at my enemy's misfortune or gloated over the trouble that came to him, I have not allowed my mouth to sin by invoking a curse against our life. If those of my household have never said, who has not been filled with Job's meat, but no stranger had to spend the night in the street, for my door was always open to the traveller. If I have concealed my sin, as people do, by hiding my guilt in my heart, because I so feared the crowd and so dreaded the contempt of the clans, that I kept silent and would not go outside. Again, Job is, in his final speech, talking about the sins that I think that we often commit, and he brings three of them, and I, I find this quite challenging. Uh, the first is gloating at his enemies, or vindictiveness. Proverbs 24 says this, Do not gloat when your enemy falls. When he stumbles, do not let your heart rejoice, or the Lord will see and disapprove and turn his wrath away from him. There's a great German word, schadenfreude, and that's the, the taking delight at someone else's misfortune. When someone falls, oh, I knew that that was going to happen. Psalm 139 verse 23 says this, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. We need to be incredibly careful that we don't glow at the fall of enemies, the kind of told you so, they got their comeuppance type of thing. The second thing is deliberately ignoring the needs of others. Just basic meanness. He's not only helped when the need has been obvious, but also when he's the only one that knows. He was generous with his food and board. And that's basic Christianity. Romans 12 verse 13 says, share with God's people who are in need. We're also told that an elder must be hospitable. Someone who's in rulership in the church must be hospitable. Matthew 25, 35. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. You know, I, I'm, my, my job is to help advise churches and encourage churches in evangelism. And one thing I would always say is just basic human hospitality. You know, open our homes to people. Invite people in. I think when we were in Dundee, I, I would say that... I, the major reason for the, the ministry developing and growing was, was two things. One was the preaching of the word, particularly in the church, and the other was the discussion of the word around the table. Uh, Annabelle, you know, we would sometimes have up to 12 people. And it, th that fellowship was just tremendously important. I think the motivation is staggering, the rewards are staggering. Some have entertained angels unawares. No guest at Job's table had ever gone away hungry. You know, I think of, of one example of this in our own life, and, and really it was Annabelle. We weren't married. I'm not even sure we were dating at the time. I think, no, we weren't. Um, but she was going to St. Columbus Church in Edinburgh. And she felt a bit guilty because somebody had said to her, oh, this is just for Highlanders and you'll get a meal if you're from Lewis. So she thought she would invite a complete stranger. And she did. She went up to this Dutch girl and said, you know, would you like to come and have a meal with me? Uh, I've got some food back in my flat. And the Dutch girl, the wonderfully Dutch, said, yeah, I come, and my sister and my mother and my father come as well. And that simple act of hospitality was the beginning of a great friendship between this Dutch couple, Case and Mika, who became almost like surrogate parents. And they were so generous and so kind to us in so many ways. You know, given you shall receive. Hospitality is such a wonderful thing. And then the last thing I'll mention here is hypocrisy, concealing sin. He said, if I concealed sin, as people do, it says, although the margin, as Adam did. And I think, you know, that's what humanity does from Adam. We conceal our sin. We hide our sin. Now, he's not ashamed that someone's going to uncover his sin. The tabloids are on his trail, if you like. The newspapers are there. And Job says, no, you can investigate all you want. I think to have a clear conscience in that regard. I think once we start hiding sin, it just grows it more and more and more. It's better for us to be open. 
It's better for us to be honest. J.C. Ryle says there seems nothing which is so displeasing to Christ as hypocrisy and unreality. That's maybe a good thought for us as we enter the new year. I feel that in churches there's an, an unwillingness to grasp the reality. And certainly in general society there seems an unwillingness to grasp the reality. But with Christ we can be real and even really confess our sins because doesn't he forgive us? You, it's a new year, you want a new start? You can have a new start. Okay, um, you can tell my voice is a wee bit tired. I'm a wee bit tired, this is early in the morning and I've already walked a good bit here. Busy day yesterday preaching at St. Thomas's. May the Lord bless his word and hopefully we shall see you again tomorrow. God bless you and if, I, if you haven't heard from me already, may I wish you a, a happy new year.